This video will walk you through the process of filling out the salary section of an expenditure budget in the New York State Grants Gateway. The salary section includes the salary detail page, which is broken down into two sections, the details section and the financial section. On this page, you will be entering in the salaries for positions that you would like covered in the grant. Sometimes those salaries are not round numbers and sometimes those salaries are not completely covered by the grant. So you need to do some math here to make sure you get the right numbers. These are the fields in the details section of the salary page. It starts with the position title. This is where you enter the name of the position or the title that you'll be requesting the grant to fund. This field will end up on the contract if one is awarded, so it might be useful to enter the person's name here as well. In my example here, I only wrote program director. This field allows up to 55 characters, which isn't really a lot, but it should be enough room to fill out the person's title and the name. Role and responsibility. This is where you describe what the person does and how it is important to the grant. Now it allows for a lot more characters here, 500 characters, but this would never appear on the contract if you were awarded a contract. So really the text that you enter here is for the good of the application and for the program understanding what this person does. The next field is number and title. This is how many people will share this title. The system doesn't do the math here. It's not going to multiply by number of people in the title. So you're usually asked just to put in a new line for each person. So most times this will just be a one in this field. Now we'll talk about the financial section. This is where you actually fill out the numbers. In this example, I put in $100,000 for the annualized salary for the position. You first need to figure out the annualized salary. It's obviously easy if the person is a yearly employee, but if the employee is working only certain months out of the year, you need to annualize that number. So in this case, we've used 100,000. So this is how much this person makes in the year. And if you don't know how to annualize it, you simply take the monthly salary and multiply it by 12, or take the weekly salary and multiply it by 52. The next field is standard work week. This is the many, how many hours in a week this person works. Now it's not towards the project, it's towards their whole job. And it doesn't factor into any of the calculations we're going to do here. So basically this is just how many hours does this person work during the week. The next two fields do factor into the equation. So you're going to take the annualized salary and you're going to put in the percent funded. This is how much of the person's effort do you want the grant to fund. So this would be an average throughout the year. You can't put it in on a sliding scale. So in this case, in this example, I've used 20%, meaning that we will be asking the grant to fund 20% of this person's salary, which is $100,000 per year. And we're going to ask for it for 12 months. So number of months funded is how many months out of the year do you want the grant to fund this person or position? So typically this will be out of 12 months, but some contract periods are more or less than a year. You need to do the math on that one if your contract period is more or less than a year. In this example, we're assuming it's for a one-year period. If this was a multi-year contract, remember you're still filling out the budget only for one year, so you're not multiplying it by the number of years. It's only one period, which is often, in most cases, one year. So again, in this example, I'm showing that the person makes $100,000 a year, they work 40 hours a week. We want the grant to fund 20% of their salary for 12 months. And of course, $100,000 times 20% is $20,000. So that's easy. Again, the system does not do the math for you, though. You would have had to freehand type this information in. Total grant funds. This is the amount, like I just said on the previous screen. How much are we asking for the grant to fund? When we look at our final budget, this is what will add up to create the budget amount that we're requesting. Total match funds. In this example here, it's grayed out because this application doesn't have a match requirement, but if it did, you would type in the match amount. Match percentage is what the state agency program would have put in as to the percentage you need to meet for match. In this case, it was zero. We don't have a match requirement in this example. And total other funds. This is the field where if your grant application has a requirement or option for other funds, you could put in the amount here. This allows you to show other funds that make up the total salary for this position if it's necessary to show that. Again, in this example, I'm not utilizing that field. 
So again, the math here is $100,000 per year. We're asking for the grant to fund them for 20% for all 12 months, which equals $20,000. Let's take a look at a couple other examples here to see how to do the math. This one is an easy one because it's 100% funded. So in this case, the person makes $65,000 a year. They work 40 hours a week, and we're asking for the grant to fund 100% of their salary. For 12 months, that of course equals 65,000, because 65,000 times 100% divided by 12 months, and then times 12 months, which of course you don't really have to do in this example, is 65,000. In this example, this is the same as the original one we were looking at, $100,000 per year. 20% funded for 12 months is $20,000. Now in example three, however, we're only going to ask for 10 months of funding for this person. So this person makes $100,000 a year. Their work week is 35 hours a week. Again, that has no bearing in the calculation. We're asking for 20% funding. However, they're only working for 10 months out of the year. So in this case, we'll take $100,000 times 20% is 20,000 divided by 12 months, which is $1,666.66.67 times 10 months. Multiply that by 10, and it's 16666 and change. You could actually round it up. In my case, I rounded it down. We'd really like you to use whole numbers here, so I rounded it to a whole number. And finally, in this example, it's another one that's funded for 12 months, but it's a different number here. So it's $65,000 a year. They work for 40 hours a week. Again, no, that has no bearing in the calculation, but we're funding them for 80% for 12 months. So 65,000 times 0.8 or times 80% equals 52,000. Again, we don't have to do the divided by 12 and times 12. So of course, these examples were very easy because they're all round numbers. In many examples, you don't have round numbers. Also, in many examples, you might need to come up to a number, so you need to play around with the math to get you to the final total grant funds number. And I'll show how to do that in a little while. But next, we're going to actually go into the system and enter in those numbers. So I'm now in the Grants Gateway in the Forms menu, and I can scroll down to the Expenditure Budget and go to the Salary page. And on the Salary page, you can see that I've already entered in a position. This is the program director. The role is directing the program. Of course, you would be a lot more descriptive in your answer. There's one person in the title. They make $100,000 a year. They work 40 hours a week. We're asking for 50% funding for 12 months, which of course is $50,000 because $100,000 times 50%. So if you hit save, you've saved that line. And in this case, I've only put in one item in this category. So the line is $50,000 and the category total is $50,000. So I'm going to now add a second person. If I click on add, I'll call this program assistant and their job is assisting the program. Again, you should be more descriptive than that. And let's say their salary is $65,000 a year. We're going to have them that they work 40 hours a week. We're asking for 20% funding for 12 months. So 65,000 times 20%, if you did the math, is 13,000. So I'll hit save. And it's now saved that line for 13,000 and added it to my $50,000. So my category is now at $63,000. I'm now going to add one that's a little harder to work on. I'll call this Program Assistant 2. And assisting the program. Let's say that their salary is $57,525 per year. And they, make 40, they work 40 hours a week. We're going to fund them, let's say, 10%. That one's easy for 12 months. So in that case, it would be $5,752.50, but we're going to round, and I'm just going to keep it at $5,752 and hit Save. So I'll do another example here, this one with someone that's not going to work the full 12 months. 
Again, I'll click Add. I'll just call this Program Assistant 3. So let's say that we know that they make 57500 per year, but we also know that what we really need to get to is the total grant funds of $8,000. Maybe that's all that we have left, or maybe that's a number that we have to hit here. So how do we figure out the, the percentages here to make the math right for $8,000 out of, of $57,500? With a calculator, you could do $8,000 divided by 57500 which gives you 0 0.13913043 so that's close enough to 14 percent so I'm going to do let's say again percent funded is 14 percent for 12 months and I'll hit save on that so again if you know the number you need to get to you can do the math backwards eight thousand dollars divided by 57500 is 0.14 or really 0.139 and change and I rounded it up to 0.14. When you're dealing with whole numbers you're not going to be able to be precise and very exact but you can round it up and be very close. Okay so now I have added four positions here. This last one I added was $8,000 and if you add all four together I'm asking for $76,752. So you might want to check your work there and check to make sure the math is right and make sure that you have all the salary positions listed. In my case, I only did four. We can see them all here in the drop down. You can see it shows it in alphabetical order, not in the order that you entered it in. If I wanted to go back and change, let's say the program director, I could click on it and hit go, make the changes and then hit save. But another thing you can do is click on this category total summary which will give us the breakdown of all those four lines that I put in and the total. So if I click on Category Total Summary, it actually downloads and creates a, an XLS file, an Excel file, that I can open and work with. So I can enable editing here, and you can see the different titles, the role responsibilities, the number of people in the title, the salary, work week, Oh, and I can see that I forgot to put in the work week hours for Program Assistant 3. Let me go back and fix that. It's another good way of double checking here. And indeed, I did forget to put that in, so we'll say 40 here. Okay, we'll go back to our Excel file. Obviously, this has no bearing on the calculations, but I put in the 40 there. And we have percent funded, number of months funded, and total grant funds. So matching funds are not used. Other funds are not used in this one. I'll delete those for now just for the sake of this, these calculations. And the category total, we don't need to see that right now. So we can see the line total and the grant funds are the same. So for the sake of this, I'm going to add one more column here just to show you the calculations. And we will do $100,000, so D, times the percent, times, or divided by 12 months, and then times the number of months funded. So if we did a formula here in Excel, it would be this, times this, divided by 12, times the number here. And you can see that comes out to be $50,000. Okay, and if we did the math all the way through, we can see they all come out to be the same number. Now, you can see when I did my calculation, I'm a little off on this $8,000 here. Really, 14% of 57500 is actually $8,050. But if I was to put in 13%, you can see it goes down to $7,475. So again, you might have to round sometimes. Now, let's say we wanted to do... Uh, only 10 months for this person. I can go in here and put 10, and the math is actually 47.93. So if I really intended this to be 10 months, I could go back and put in 47.93 for this position, Program Assistant 2. So the purpose of this Excel sheet is one, 
for you to double check your work here. Make sure that all the people you wanted to enter are in there and all the math is done properly. And if you have a very large list, I only have four people here, but if you had 15 people or something like that, it might be a lot easier to look here and make sure that you have the right numbers. Okay, so let's say I did want to change this because I realized I put in 12 months funded for Program Assistant 2. And if I did the math, that's actually $47.93.75. So I'll make it $47.94. I'll go back to Program Assistant. And I'll make it $47.94. And I'll change this to 10 months. Again, the system doesn't do the math for you, so you need to make sure that you do it right. In the end, I'm now asking for $75,794 in the category of salary. And again, it's important to remember that the system will not do the math for you, and you need to make sure that the math is correct. There's several ways to do it. One way is doing it with a calculator. Another way is doing it on a spreadsheet. I hope this was helpful. Please contact the help desk if you need any more assistance with this at 518-474-5595 or at grantsgateway at its.ny.gov.